Hello everyone. So in the last session, we had discussed about the cybersecurity fundamentals like confidentiality, integrity, availability. Also, we have discussed about what is hacking, what is ethical hacking, hacker classes and so on. In this session, we will continue with the methods for implementing security controls. Okay, so we are not going to go in details of each and every measure or of each and every mechanism because these mechanisms are brought in itself. So that is why we will gain some basic understanding of each and every mechanism, like uh, each and every security control, like how to implement, what are the expect, what, what, uh, what is the purpose and so on. So first is information assurance. Information assurance is all about practicing or managing the risk related task so that we can ensure the integrity, availability and authenticity and confidentiality of information. It is like uh, we are following some, we are implementing some mechanism, some security measures so that we can ensure some key aspects of the information assurance, which is confidentiality, integrity, availability, authenticity, and non repudiation So information assurance refers to, to the practice of managing risk related to the integrity, which is no one can modify your data, which is integrity, availability, which, which is no one can, like your data should be available 24 into 7 hours without any latency. Authenticity is like whenever the data whenever uh, whatever we are receiving from the receiver side that should be genuine like that should be malicious free and confidentiality which means no one can read your data that is confidentiality of information so whenever we are talking about the information assurance it is like we are ensuring the confidentiality in integrity availability authenticity and non repudiation now how we are ensuring that depends on some key activities for example, risk management. Risk management is all about handling risk, identifying risk, assessing, managing, and mitigating the risk in an information system or of any company. Then we can implement some security policies, some procedures, some guidelines in the company so that we can ensure these experts. Then we can also implement compliance and incident response, which is preparing for and responding to security breaches or information loss. That is why we have, we have to prepare for the security breaches and for the information loss. Okay, like incident response is all about what we have to do after any attack, after any event or after any security incident. That is incident response. So we have these key aspects, which is confidentiality, integrity, availability, authenticity, non reputation and these key activities, which means we can implement these key activities to ensure these key aspects, that is information assurance. Now we can understand each and every expert in detail later on. Okay, for now we have one more technique or we can say one more strategy that is continual adaptive security strategy. So it is a dynamic approach to managing cyber security that focuses on continuous improvement and adaption of to evolving threats. So it is another strategy we are we are including we are we are we are implementing these parts which is protect detect predict and respond so in this strategy again we are ensuring we are implementing the security measures so that we can protect our company or our assets or security data from the vulnerabilities and attacks okay now how we are implementing this particular strategy so we can protect so it is like a a kind of a cycle we have to follow first we start with the protect so we can implement the security measures some safeguards some security controls so that we can protect our systems and data that is protection detection is like whenever we are identifying and recognize the new vulnerabilities loopholes new threads in our machine uh, for example let's say we are running some penetration testing we are running some vulnerability assessment and management to check if there are some vulnerabilities, some weakness in my system or not. And then we are checking with the threats, with the new threats in the market or with the current threat in our company. Then predict. Predict is like making a prediction about the future attacks. So we can use threat intelligence or analysis to predict the future attacks. Then respond. Then after prediction of the future attacks, we can create some recovery plans 
we can create some new strategies we can implement some security me measures so that we can respond to new threats okay or we can protect our system from the future attacks so that is a uh, four process which is protect detect predict and respond so it is another strategy so whatever we are talking about here these are strategies like what kind of strategy we can follow it totally depends on the type of company we are working in like it vary from company to company like uh, the architecture of the company the infra of the company the data is uh, is it is a, a government based company or is it uh, it is a private sector company or is it any service based company or product based company so etc so basically whatever the security mechanism we are implementing or we will implement that totally depends on the type of company we are working in or what are like the architect architecture of the company how the data flows how they store information etc so these are like some few measures otherwise we have to follow some frameworks like nist framework iso framework and so on so we can also follow those frameworks so these are like a kind of a strategy we have to follow okay then we have this cyber threat intelligence so cyber threat intelligence is another a uh, kind of a strategy we can implement so that we can predict some future attacks so cyber threat intelligence is the information and analysis related to cyber attacks that helps organization understand prepare for and respond to potential cyber attacks cyber threat intelligence is all about collecting the information about threats information about techniques of the attackers malware of the attackers so that we can protect our company or our data from the cyber attacks so in the cyber threat intelligence we follow this strategy okay like these are like some kind of types of cyber threat intelligence first we have this strategic cdi which is strategic cyber threat intelligence the purpose of this particular cyber threat intelligence is to provide high level insights into the threat landscape and trends focusing on long term threats trends and motivations so strategic is all about we are making some long term planning we are doing some long term planning so that we can protect our company from the attacks so we are focusing on some long term threats or some trends in the market okay and some motivations like what can be a motivation or a motive behind any attack so we have to focus on the long term planning so the audience like the person who perform this strategic cti are senior executives and decision makers then tactical cti it is like offers information on specific tactics techniques and procedures used by adversaries helping to improve defense mechanism so tactical cti is like uh, we are gaining information about the ttps which is the tactics the techniques the procedures of the attacker like how the attacker can attack what kind of technique they can use what kind of methodology they, they can use what kind of tools what kind of procedures they can use so tactically is all about creating a plan or just collecting information about ttps and then creating a plan that how we can protect from new technologies new tools in the market etc used by adversaries helping to improve defense mechanism then the audience are security operation teams which is soc teams and incident responders then operational cti so this is for providing information on immediate or ongoing attacks so this is like we are collecting information on day to day attack like ongoing attack for example we are uh, collecting information about specific threats or campings such as in in indicators of compromise so it is like we are collecting information on a very recent we can say attacks or very common types of attacks in the market okay so audience are incident response teams and threat hunters they are the particular person who perform the operational cti then technical cti which is details on specific technical information like ip address malware signatures or domain name etc okay so that is Te uh, technical cdi which is like uh, we are collecting information about the ip address let's say the attacker is attacking from any particular ip so that ip is a malicious ip so we can collect that ip we can collect re uh, related ip we can collect domain name malwares and so on so that is our technical cdi and that is performed by 
सिक्योरिटी एनालिस्ट और टेक्निकल स्टाफ सो दिस इज सी डी आई सी डी आई इज ऑल अबाउट इट इज अगेन अ काइंड ऑफ ए स्ट्रेटेजी वी आर वी आर इंप्लीमेंटिंग इन द कंपनी एंड वी आर वी आर कलेक्टिंग इन्फॉर्मेशन अबाउट द थ्रेड्स द मेलवेयर द टेक्निकल इन्फॉर्मेशन द स्ट्रेटेजीज ऑफ द अटैकर सो दैट वी कैन प्रोटेक्ट अवर कंपनी ऑन टाइम ओके सो दैट वी कैन प्लान अवर स्ट्रेटेजी ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ साइबर थ्रेड इंटेलिजेंस इन्फॉर्मेशन लाइक वॉट एवर द इन्फॉर्मेशन वी आर गेटिंग फ्रॉम दिस सी टी आई देन वी हैव थ्रेड इंटेलिजेंस लाइफ साइकिल सो इन द थ्रेड इंटेलिजेंस लाइफ साइकिल लाइक वॉट काइंड ऑफ प्रोसेस वी कैन फॉलो टू परफॉर्म थ्रेड इंटेलिजेंस लाइफ साइकिल सो फर्स्ट द रिक्वायरमेंट्स विच इज इन्फॉर्मेशन गैदरिंग अगेन वी स्टार्ट विद द इन्फॉर्मेशन गैदरिंग विच इज रिक्वायरमेंट्स गैदरिंग दिस रिक्वायरमेंट्स गैदरिंग इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम द इन्फॉर्मेशन गैदरिंग ऑफ हैकिंग मैथोलॉजी सो हैकिंग मैथोलॉजी इज लाइक वी आर अटैकिंग वी आर लाइक वी आर स्टडिंग द मैथोलॉजी फ्रॉम द परस्पेक्टिव ऑफ अटैकिंग बट थ्रेट इंटेलिजेंस इज लाइक प्रोटेक्टिंग सो दिस इज अ प्रोटेक्टिंग मैथोलॉजी वी कैन से और जस्ट थ्रेट इंटेलिजेंस लाइफ सके लाइक वॉट काइंड ऑफ प्रोसेस वी हैव टू फॉलो फॉर परफॉर्मिंग दिस थ्रेट इंटेलिजेंस सो फर्स्ट रिक्वायरमेंट गैदरिंग विच इज डिफाइनिंग इंटेलिजेंस नीड्स बेस्ड ऑन सिक्योरिटी गोल्स then collection gather relevant data from various sources first requirements gathering is all about we have to identify like what kind of requirements we want like what kind of information we are looking for for example let's say in my network let's say in my company i have just windows machine just windows machine so now i will collect the information about windows like the threats which is related, related to windows not the threats which is related to linux or any other operating system so let's say now i am operating on the just on the linux machine linux server linux system so now i will start it to collect the information about the linux threats linux weaknesses and so on so that is requirements let's say i have a website so now for that website what are the possible vulnerabilities what are the possible threats so that is requirements gathering first we have to look in our company that what we are looking for what are what are our security goals then collection after uh, gathering the requirements then we can collect the information from various sources various sources can be open source okay like from the internet or from the organizations like there are like many organizations who provide this threat intelligence as a service so we can also contact the organization for information for new attacks for relevant uh, news etc then processing after collecting information from various sources we can process like we can organize and structure the collected data because whenever we are collecting data data contain some uh, some kind of errors we can say some missing values some duplicate values and so on so we have to clean data so that is data pre processing then analysis after collecting data and processing it like cleaning your data and presenting data in the structured form we have to analyze so in the analyze we examine data to generate actionable action insights so we examine data so that we can generate some actionable insights some useful insights on the data then this mention which is like share intelligence with stakeholder in a useful format so it is like uh, after collecting information from the data we can share the information to the higher authorities so that they can take useful actions then feedback and review and update feedback it is like it is a cyclic process we have to keep on collecting we have to keep on reviewing data and then we have to keep on updating the information and so on so it is a cyclic process and the person who performed this process is known as threat intelligence analyst so again there is a high demand for the threat intelligence analyst okay so this is like a basic process we can follow for performing threat intelligence so this is the process and this is the need why are we performing the threat intelligence because we have to ensure the confidentiality integrity availability and so on so this is the process these are the members involved okay then we have this threat modeling so threat modeling is a structured approach used to identify analyze and prioritize potential threats to system or applications 
सो आफ्टर परफॉर्मिंग द थ्रेड इंटेलिजेंस वी मूव टू थ्रेड मॉडलिंग थ्रेड मॉडलिंग इज अगेन अ स्ट्रक्चर्ड अप्रोच फॉर आइडेंटिफाइंग एंड एनालाइजिंग एंड प्रायोरटाइजिंग द थ्रेड्स ओके लाइक पोटेंशियल थ्रेड्स टू अ सिस्टम ऑफ और एप्लीकेशन लेट से आई हैव विंडोज इन माई कंपनी एंड लेट से आई हैव क्रिएटेड अ लिस्ट ऑफ विंडोज वीकनेसेस लाइक विंडोज वन लिटीज विच आर न्यू ओके और विच आर इन द मार्केट और विच आर विच कैन अफेक्ट माई विंडोज सो नाउ आफ्टर कलेक्टिंग इन्फॉर्मेशन अबाउट विंडोज इन्फॉर्मेशन लाइक थ्रेड्स ओके लाइक पोटेंशियल थ्रेड्स आफ्टर कलेक्टिंग इन्फॉर्मेशन अबाउट पोटेंशियल थ्रेड्स फ्रॉम द थ्रेड इंटेलिजेंस लाइफ साइकिल आई नाउ फॉर्म द थ्रेड मॉडलिंग थ्रेड मॉडलिंग इज लाइक वी हैव अ सिस्टम वी हैव अम्प्यूटर सिस्टम लाइक अ विंडोज सिस्टम एंड देयर वी विल टेक वन लिटीज वन बाई वन एंड वी विल चेक इफ माई विंडोज मशीन इज वन लिबल टू दीज वन लिटीज ऑन नॉट दीज पोटेंशियल थ्रेड्स ऑन नॉट so that is thread modeling where we are modeling we are we are finding the relationship between the system and the found uh, potential threads it is like we are checking if my windows is vulnerable or not if it is vulnerable then we can fix it if it is not vulnerable then we can move to any other machine so that is thread modeling we are we have a list of all the threads then we are checking if those threads are like if my machines are vulnerable to those threats or not that is thread modeling where we are actually identifying analyzing and prioritizing the potential threats to my machines to my applications to my websites etc it helps organizations understand the security risk and uh, design effective defenses so after identifying if my system is vulnerable or not i can like i can uh understand the security risk and design some effective defenses okay like i can protect my device on time then we have like how we are how we have to perform this thread modeling so first we identify the assets as i said we have to identify how many devices are there what kind of devices are there and what kind of devices need protection so that is identifying the threats then defining the security objectives which is clarify the prote uh, protection goals so we have to identify the security objectives like what kind of device we are protecting and how we can protect that is protection goals then create architecture overview which is we can uh, like we can uh, use diagram systems uh, components and inter interactions like we can create a architecture of our network or of our machines and then we can take a overview as a whole that how many devices are there and what kind of devices are there in each department of my company and so on after identifying these points then we can identify the threats identifying threats means we have to recognize potential threats and adversities which is like we have to identify we have a list of all the threats okay which we have collected from the threat intelligence life cycle after collecting the information about potential threats we can check if my machines are vulnerable to these threats or not that is identifying the threats then analyzing the vulnerabilities if my machines are vulnerable so which, which means there is there is some vulnerabilities so now we have to check for the vulnerabilities like we can check for the vulnerabilities we can check the risk related to the vulnerabilities and so on then we can assess the risk okay like we can check uh, the risk rating there and then we can prioritize the risk then de define the counter measures which is like we can develop the strategies to mitigate the risk so whenever we are developing any kind of strategy to protect the system that should be cost effective cost effective means that should be lie under our cost because the overall overall uh, we are performing the security for the businesses to protect the business so we have to implement some security that should come under the cost of our business okay so that is de uh, defining the counter measures so whatever the mechanism whatever the security controls we have to apply that should be cost effective then review and revise that is we can keep on updating our strategies keep on updating our model keep on checking for the new threats and keep on adding our assets so that we can check for the threats so that is a whole process of thread modeling
So it is like a hierarchical uh, structure. First, we start with the threat intelligence. Then we move to threat modeling. Okay, it's like one by one. Threat intelligence is all about collecting the threats, checking our architecture, and checking the potential threats in our network. Threat modeling is all about finding the vulnerabilities related to the threats, which we have found in the threat intelligence lifecycle. So that is threat modeling. Then we have this incident management. Incident management is the process of handling and dissolving the security incidents to minimize their impact and restore normal operations as quickly as possible. So incident management, again, it is all about what we have to do after any security incident. For example, let's say there's a company and any attacker attacks the company. Okay, like, let's say there's a security breach. There's some any kind of DOS attack or any kind of attack. So now what we have to do after any attack, which is after the incident. So that is known as incident management. That what kind of process, what kind of procedure we have to follow after the incident. So incident management is the process of handling and resolving the security incident, or we can say security events, to minimize their impact, okay, and restore the normal operations as soon as possible. So, what kind of operations we follow in the incident management? First, preparation, which is like we have to set up plans, tools, and training beforehand. Before any incident, we have to prepare in advance. Okay, we have to prepare for the future attacks. So we can create some BCP, like business recovery plans. We can create some disaster recovery plans, so on. So we have to create a strategy that what we will do if someone attack my company. That is a preparation phase. Identification, then if any security breach happen in my company, so I will identify, I will detect and identify the incidents. Like how many incidents take place, who is the victim, what is the timing of the attack, and so on and how many devices are compromises and so on. Then containment. Containment is like to limit the impact of the incident. Let's say in my network, five devices are there. Let's say five devices are there. Out of five devices, two devices are infected with the malware. So now what I will do, I will just remove those devices from my network so that I can protect my three devices. So that is containment, like limit the impact of the incident so that I can just remove the infected devices from my network. Okay, then eradication, which is like remove the root cause. Uh, let's say if there's any malware in, inside my machines, so I will remove the malware or I will uh, just restore the hardware or the windows. Then recovery, which is restore normal operations and verify the systems and lesson learned, which is like analyze the incident and improve the processes. Recovery is all about we can recover the systems and we can move back to the normal operation of the company. Okay, then last, which is lesson learned. So we can create some reports. We can create some, we can write some uh, like our insights, like how the attack happened, what are the weaknesses in the company and what are the lessons we can take from this incident so that we can avoid the future attacks. So that is incident management. Then with this incident handling and response. So how we are managing, like how we are actually managing the incident. That is, that comes under incident handling and response. Okay, so let's say whenever any attack uh, happen in any company. So what kind of step we have to take? So that is incident handling and response, which involves the systematic approach to managing and mitigating the security incidents to minimize and uh, minimize impact and restore the normal operations. Which is like, again, it is it is coming under the incident management. Whenever any attack, whenever, whenever any attacker attacks my network, my devices or my company, then what kind of actual steps I can take to restore to normal operations. Let's say any attacker attacks on my server, okay, on my server. And let's say that is a DOS, DDoS attack. So after the DDoS attack, let's say my server crashes in the middle. 
okay so now how i can restore my server so that it can restart and it started to share the processes so we have this some key steps like preparation again we can develop some response teams plans train and set up some tools detection and identification like we can monitor the systems analyze alerts and confirm the incidents that is detection containment again we can isolate the systems so that we can uh, prevent the spread of malwares that eradication which is removing the root cause of the incident let's say it can be any malware it can be any uh, it can be any exploit and so on then recovery which is like then we can recover the systems and we can validate their integrity integrity is like no one can modify the data then at last post incident review which is like we can create some documents we can create some uh, like uh, findings we can update policies so that we can protect from the future attacks that is coming under incident management okay so that is like uh, actually we have to take more steps than this one this is just a high level overview like how we can perform the incident management, but we have to do a lot whenever we are handling any event. Okay, so this is just an overview. Then with this risk management. So risk management is a, is a, a is the potential for loss or harm resulting from a threat exploiting a vulnerability in a system, process, or asset. So risk management is like, uh, let's say th this is my system. And let's say my system is vulnerable to any any kind of vulnerability okay there's some vulnerability in my system so that is a risk for my machine that is a risk why because any attacker any at attacker can attack or exploit my vulnerability so there's a risk in my system now we have to prioritize the risk like whether the risk is high the risk is medium or the risk is low so we have to prioritize the risk and on the basis of the prioritization, we have to fix the risk. Let's say I have two systems. In my one system, the risk is high. And in my second system, the risk is low. So I will first fix the system number one, which have the high risk. So that is risk prioritization. So risk is any potential loss or harm, which can be, which can result from a threat, exploiting a vulnerability. Threat can be anything. Threat can be malware. Threat can be attacker, attacking any, applying any attack. Threat can be anything. Exploiting means hacking any attacker, attacking a vulnerability in a system, process, or asset. Okay, system can be any system, Windows, Linux, or Mac OS, or any kind of server, any kind of application process. Whenever we are transmitting data from one place to another, that is a process. And asset, it can be again any kind of asset. It can be intangible and tangible asset. Intangible assets are like the assets which we cannot touch, like the softwares. Okay, the softwares are intangible assets and tangibles are like the PCs, the computers, or we can say the servers, like which we can touch. So assets can be intangible and tangible. So risk can be, can arise anywhere in my company. So I have to check whether this risk is tolerable or not. Okay, so there's a risk level. Okay, there's a risk level. So at certain level, I can tolerate the risk. If the risk level is high, if the risk is more than my risk level, or we can say a risk boundary, then I have to take some actions. I have to mitigate the risk. And for the mitigation also, we have many steps. Okay, like what kind of mitigation strategy we have to apply for reducing the risk. So the overall goal of the risk management is to identify the risk, okay, identify the risk in my company or in my network, then prioritizing the risk and then at last fixing the risk. That is risk management. We have to identify the risk, then we have to assess the risk, like uh, we have to check the risk, uh, risk priority, we have to check the risk ratings and so on, and then we have to fix the risk, which is mitigating the risk. Okay, which is mitigating the risk. Mitigating means reducing the risk. Reducing the risk at an 
acceptable level. Okay. That is reducing the risk. So here, risk management phases. So first, with this risk identification, identifying the potential risk in the network or in the company. Risk assessment, which is like evaluating the impact and likelihood of identifying risk. Which is like if there's a risk in my machine or in my network or in my company, then I will evaluate the risk, the impact of the risk, and like the likelihood of the risk. Likelihood means when this risk can arise. Okay, if I fix the risk now, if I fix my systems now, so what is the probability that this attack that uh, can arise later on? Like in six months, in quarterly, in three months, and so on. Then risk mitigation, which is like developing any strategies to reduce or eliminate the risk. So that is whatever the strategies we are applying for risk mitigation, that should be again cost effective. Because the overall goal of uh, applying security is to, for the business, for the business continuity. That is why we are applying the security. That is why we have the security. So that we can run our business without any disruption. So we have to apply the risk mitigation techniques, which can reduce the risk. And that should be cost effective. And that should align, that should align well with the security with the company goals that is risk mitigation then risk monitoring where we can monitor the risk we can track the risk we can track the devices and we can re uh, review the risk and mitigation effectiveness let's say if i am applying any security mechanism in my company so now i have to check if that security mechanism is effective or not that is risk monitoring then risk response which is like implement actions to address and manage risk when they are materialized. Which is like we have to respond uh, on the basis of the monitor risk. Like if, if there's any high risk in the network, then we can respond. We can uh, again mitigate the risk. So that is risk management. Okay. So again, it is like a very broad concept, the risk management. Okay. So this is just an overview of the risk management. Then we have one more strategy, which is defense in depth. Defense in depth is a security strategy in which several protection layers are placed throughout an information systems. Let's say there's a device in my network. Okay, now let's say there's one layer of security, just one layer of security, okay, one layer. So any attacker, any attacker can attack in my system easily because there's one layer of security. What if there, there is like multiple layers of security? Let's say seven layers of security. So it will be hard for any attacker to attack on my main machine. So that is a concept of defense in depth, where we are applying several protection layers, which are which is protecting the systems. Now, several protection layers are independent to each other. It means one layer is not dependent on any other layer. So that is defense in depth. So it helps to prevent direct attacks against the system and its data because a break in one layer only leads the break in another layer or attack in another layer. For example, let's say this is my machine and this is my, let's say my server on my main machine. And here we have several layers. We have layer, layer number second, layer number three, layer number four, five, sorry. Layer number five and let's say six and let's say seven. Now each and every layer, each and every layer are independent, which means when, let's say, the, if the attacker manages to break this layer, then the attacker has to put the full efforts to break this layer, and then this layer, and then this layer, and so on. So the attacker has to put each and every time the equal efforts to break the layer. So that is each and every layer are independent. No layer is dependent on each other. That is our defense in depth techniques. Also, it is a it is not a cost effective. It depends on your company basically, but it involves higher cost. Okay. For example, let's say we have this machine. Let's say I have this machine here. Now in this machine, or let's say this data here. Now I have to protect my data. So for protecting my data, I am applying these layers. First layer is application layer, host layer, internal network, 
perimeter, physical and uh, policies and procedures and awareness. So policies, procedures and awareness is like we are implementing the pro uh, policies, the procedures, the awareness so that we can protect the company. Okay, like we can protect the company. So everyone in the company should follow the policies, procedures and awareness. They should be aware about that what is malware and how the malware can attack and what is email phishing and what is malicious mail and so on. So that is spreading the awareness, implementing policies and procedures so that everyone can follow. Every employee in my company should be aware about the security because security is not a responsibility of any one person or any group of persons. Security is a responsibility of every person in the company. Every person. Okay, each and every employee should be responsible for the security of the company. So that is why every person should be available or should be aware about the security incident, security terminologies. Then that is first layer. Second layer is physical layer where we are putting, putting some locks, some fences, like some security guards, so that we can protect the company. Let's say we are this company and outside of the company, we are putting some CCTV cameras. We are putting some fences. We are pu putting some security guards. Okay, so that we can protect the company. So that no one can enter in my company. No unauthorized person. Then perimeter. Perimeter is like uh, we are putting some firewalls, some VPNs in the network, some packet filters so that we can protect the company. Internal network. We are, we are implementing the, the firewall, okay, like IDS, IPS, and so on. Then host, where we are, let's say the host is my devices, my windows, the Linux operating system. So we are, uh, we are implementing the software firewalls, the antiviruses in the com in the system, so that we can protect from malwares. The next layer is application. So whatever the application we are using, that should be encrypted. Okay, like uh, that should transfer data in the encrypted format. We always used HTTPS and so on. So this is application layer security. And last, we have data here. Data should be encrypted. Okay, data should be stored in the proper place. And wherever the data is storing, that should be encrypted as well and so on. So that is a kind of a layer by layer security. We are, we are implementing many layers in the company so that we can protect the company from direct attacks. Okay, that is the whole concept of defense and depth. So I hope this much is clear. Then at last, we can move to security rules, the security standards in the company or in the country. So we have some very popular security incidents. Okay, so we will uh, get an overview of the security standards, uh, security laws and regulations. First security law is, or we can say standard is, PCI DSS. PCI stands for Payment Card in Industry Data Security Standard. So it is a piece, uh, standard which is mainly for protecting the payment information. Payment information. For example, the credit card information, in the debit cards, postcards, and so on of the company. Which means if any company is storing the information about customers, like payment information, payment details, then that company should follow PCI DSS. So PCI DSS is a set of security standards designed to ensure that all companies that accept, process, store, or transmit credit card information maintain a secure environment. So let's say if we have Amazon. Now, Amazon is uh, collecting the user information like username, password, address, and also the payment information like credit card information, debit card information, and so on. So these types of companies should follow or should apply this PCI DSS in their company so that they can protect the payment information of the customers. So any company which is accepting the payment information, processing the payment information, processing means moving information from one place to another, storing information from anywhere that's in the database or transmit credit card information should maintain a secure environment so that no attacker can attack in these company and no attacker can steal the information of the customer payment information. That is like the whole purpose of PCI DSS for protecting the payment information of the customers. Then key requirements, like these are some key requirements which we can use 
or which we can follow for protecting the environment we are we are implementing we are we are we are uh, storing or processing the data the payment data first requirement is build and maintain a secure network and systems so we can build some secure networks we can build, build some secure systems so that we can protect from the attackers let's say if my network is not protected so any attacker can attack my network so first is protecting the network we can implement firewalls we can implement ids ips and so on then protect card holder data which is we are protecting the payment information then maintain a vulnerability management program so we have to keep on maintaining a vulnerability management program which is we have to keep on checking for the vulnerabilities we have to keep on checking for the threats and so on so that we can maintain our vulnerability management program in the companies so that we can keep on checking for the new loopholes weakness in the company and once we figure out that let's say some systems are vulnerable then we can fix the system on time so that no one can attack in those systems then implement the uh, strong access control measures where we can implement some strong access control measures like we can implement some security mechanism security controls and so on then regularly monitor and test your networks like running the text uh, test and uh, monitor the network so that we can look for the malicious traffic malicious uh, malware and so on then maintain an information security policy a policy that everyone should follow even the customers should follow and the employees should follow then scope applicable to any organization that handles credit card information including merchants and service providers so this pci dss can be applied to any kind of company who is storing processing accepting the payment information of any customer that is pci dss it is a very popular standard after pci dss we have this hipaa hipaa stands for the health insurance portability and accountability act HIPAA is mainly applied in the healthcare institutions where we are protecting the information of the patient data okay it is in the us which is hipaa sets the standard for protecting the sensitive patient information in united states it ensures the confidentiality integrity availability of electronic protected health information like for example we have information like uh, the patient records the health information the transaction details and so on so hipaa ensures the details the protection of these details like these information the patient information and hence we are ensuring the confidentiality integrity and availability so some are some are the key components like privacy rule so governs the use and disclose of information individuals health information which which means you uh, any healthcare institutions cannot disclose the information about an individual like health information if any institutions uh is disclosing the information about individuals then they are violating the hipaa okay the hipaa act then security rule is it will specify the safeguards to provide sorry to protect ephi which is electronic protected health information which includes the customer information customer phone number customer address customer payment information customer details customer health care details and so on then breach notification rule let's say if any company comes under the attack then that company that health care institute should tell the company or should sorry should tell the government or the individuals that they are under the attack so that is breach notification rule which will require cover entities to notify the affected individuals government and in some cases the media that they are un under the attack or there is a security breach in their company so overall hipaa applies in the healthcare institutes okay so that is hipaa again it is a very popular attack then we have this surveillance auxiliary attack it is like a act for of 2002 and it was enacted to protect the rights of the investors while improving the accuracy and reliability of corporate disclosure so this is all about protecting the rights of the investors by improving the accuracy and reliability 
of corporate disclosure let's say you are investing somewhere in any company so if you know about the financial records of the company financial status of the company the profit the loss then only we can invest so this law this act will disclose the reality of the corporates okay like whatever they are presenting in the uh, in the to the individuals that should be genuine that should be not fake so it focuses on the internal controls over financial reporting so any company is uh, if the if the company is uh, uh, disclosing their financial report their financial profit their loss so that should be original okay that should be not fake so that should that uh, that is comes under the service auxiliary act so if any company is uh, like uh, disclose disclosing any fake information then he uh, that company is violating this law some are the key requirements like ceo or cfo must certify the accuracy of financial statement okay uh like before disclosing any financial statement the ceo or the cfo of the company should verify that if this information is valid or not or certify or not and hence the financial disclosure corporate responsibility for financial reports internal control assessment and reports and increase the penalties for fraud of any other uh, if any company is uh, in, uh, like disclosing any fake information fake financial report then there should be a penalty against that company okay so where we can apply this act so applies in the public companies of the us department okay like us uh, country and mainly in the accounting firms so that is our scope of the uh this act okay so overall we are implementing this act for protecting the rights of the investors so that we can have the original financial report of the company then with this fisma fisma stands for the federal information security management act this act requires the federal agencies and their contractors to develop document and implement the information security programs to protect the government information systems so this fisma is applied in the government companies so that whatever the uh, whatever the contracts whatever the documents they are developing that should be again genuine and that should protect the government information and their systems okay like uh, we are implementing this fisma so that we can ensure that if the government are following the uh, like the security or not if they are implementing the security st strategies or not okay like uh, if the federal agencies or their contractors should develop the, develop document and implement the security programs so that they can protect the government agencies government information systems so this is especially for the governments the and for the federal agencies because if the government is not protected so how the individuals in the country are protected so that is why fisma is mainly for the government sectors key requirements they can conduct some risk assessment programs some risk management programs then develop some and maintain some security policies procedures and plans okay implement the security measures and controls continuous monitoring of the traffic of the network of the attacks and then annual security review and reporting to the office of management and budget so they can uh, annually publish their security report security uh, like strategies security review like how they are implementing the security and everything so these are some key requirements the scope of this act which is like it will apply to us federal agencies and their contractors so this particular act is valid or can be applied in the federal agencies in the us and their related contractors okay then with this gdpr gdpr is for protecting the data okay it is like uh, gdpr stands for the general data protection regulations gdpr is a regulation in U U uh, europe law of uh, uh, on data protection and privacy for individuals within the european union and european economic area it is like it is all about protecting the data of okay, the general data it also address the transfer of 
of personal data outside the UE and EEA area. For, uh, this particular law, or we can say regulations applied in the European Union area or the European Economic area. So also whenever we are transmitting data from this area, this area to the US or to any other area. So this law should be applied there as well. Even GDPR is like a kind of a regulation. Again, it, it is very popular and it is applied in almost all the countries. Some key requirements like lawful, fair and transparent processing of data. So whatever the data we are providing, that should be fair, that should be transparent. Okay, then data minimization and purpose limitation. So whatever the data we are transmitting, that should be of use, that is useful data. So we should avoid transmitting the unnecessary data. So that is purpose limitation. Then consent for data processing. So whatever the data we are processing, that should be encrypted, that should be valid. Okay, then rights for data subjects, right to assist data, right to ensure data, right to erase data, right to uh, remove data if the data is, in, is not in use, data breach notification if there's an attack in the company or if there's a data breach that should be notified to the individuals and appointment of data protection officers for certain organization. Like we can appoint some, uh, like they're like certain organization who audits who audit the companies, like whether the, whether the company companies are following the GDPR or not, or not, or any other regulations or not. So where we can apply this GDPR or where it is applied, applies to organizations operating within the UE, sorry, EU and organizations outside the EU that offers goods or services to individuals in the EU to or monitor their behavior. So any organization which is in the European area or that if that organization is also transmitting data to this particular area. So we are, uh, so in this area, we can apply this GDPR. But uh, uh, this GDPR is applied in many countries. Okay, not even in the European, in many uh, countries. That is GDPR, all about protecting the data. Then with this ISO, IEC uh, Act here, uh, a kind of a standard. Okay. So ISO stands for the International Standard uh, Standardization of Organization. So that is like uh, another, a kind of a very popular tech, sorry, popular standard. And this is the latest version, which is 2022. It is an international standard for managing the information security. Like how we are managing, what kind of security strategies we are following, what kind of framework we are using, what kind of mechanism we are following, what kind of mitigation techniques we are using. So that is all about ISO. It specifies the requirement of establishing, implementing, maintaining, continually improving an information security management system, which is ISMS. So it is all about what kind of strategy we are applying, how we are managing, how we are establishing, how we are implementing, how we are improving the security management in our companies which means every company should follow the security standards, security uh, implementation. Every company should be protected from the attacker. So that is this law checks. This law checks for whether the company is establishing any security operations, implementing, maintaining, or improving the in, improving their security uh, systems or not. Then with some key concepts here, in the key concepts, you have information security risk management and assessment, leadership and support for the ISMS, security objectives and planning to achieve them, competence and awareness, operational planning and control, and so on. So it is all about we are, we have to establish, we have to implement, maintain, and improve the security, or we can say information security management systems so that we can improve our company or our uh, security of the company. So we can implement if the company is certified by the ISO IEC, then that company is a verified company. We can say uh, that company is following the security properly or that company have the proper security or we can say information security systems if the company is verified by the ISO. Okay, so so, so we can say that company is a reputed company as well. Okay. 
So we can apply many frameworks of the ISO in our company so that we can establish any framework. We can secure our company by following their frameworks, why we can maintain our security programs with the help of ISO. So where we can apply, it can be applied to any organization regardless of their size, type and nature, which means this is a kind of a standard which can be applied in any organization. Okay, irrespective of their nature, whether it is a government company, private company, product-based company, service-based company, any other company, or the size or the type of the company. So that is a very important standard. So whatever the standard which we have discussed, these are like all very important. And these are the standards which are mainly asked in the interviews, like PCI, DSS, HIPAA, Surveys, Auxiliate, FISMA, GDPR, ISO. Then we have this DMCA. DMCA is like, uh, it is again a kind of a copyright act. Okay. So DMCA is a US law that implements two 1996 treaties of the World Intellectual Property Organization, which is WIPO. It addresses the rights of copyright owners in the digital environment, which is like, it is all about no one can copy a content. That is copyright act. But it is a digital copyright act. Okay, some key components are anti, uh, we can implement this uh, particular act in almost every company so that we can protect our data, we can protect our content from from uh, pirate, pirated attackers or from being copied anywhere. Okay, so we have many key components here, which is anti-circumventions provision, uh, provisions, which is which prohibits the circumventions of technological measures used to, pro used to protect copyrighted works. Then safe harbor provisions, which is limits the li liability of online service providers for copyright infringement by their users provide provided certain conditions are met. Okay, and then pro protection of the copyright management information. So no one can copy your content. Okay, if the content is licensed, Okay, then it will uh, prohibit any user, any anyone uh, to avoid copying your content. Okay, and if someone is uh, like, if there's a copyright issue uh, on any company, then that sh they should uh, like fill some penalties. So scope is like applied to individuals and organizations involved in creating distributing and using digital copyrighted materials. So let's say if, if any company is creating any blogs, creating any books, any PDFs or so on. So any company or any individual even, if that particular user is distributing or using any copyrighted material, uh, sorry, distributing or creating any kind of material, then they sh uh, that should be applied. Okay, like in, in every company almost, because every company is implementing their own websites, their own materials, their own PDFs, their own books, and so on. So it is again applied in almost every companies or even with the individuals. Then with this DPA, DPA is a, a kind of a data protection act, which is implemented of the GDPR, and it governs how the personal data is used and protected in the UK. So the Data Protection Act 2018 in the UK's implementation of the GDPR and it governs how personal data is used and protect, protected in the UK. So whenever we are transmitting data from one place to another, then there should be fair. Okay, the, the, the data should be lawful and there should be transparency in the data. Then it specifies the purpose of data collection and limits the data used for their, those purposes. So whenever we are transmitting data or the data is in use, that should be that should have some purpose. Okay, we cannot. Uh, we should avoid transmitting the unnecessary data. And if the data is unnecessary, then we should remove the data so that we can free up some space, some memory, ensure data accuracy and mandates keeping data up to date. Data should be up to date, updated, and the data should be accurate. Okay. That provides right to individuals, such as right to access data held about them. That imposes strict rules on sensitive data processing. So whenever we are transmitting the data from one place to another, any confidential data that should be encrypted. Okay. Data should be necessary. Data should be of use. Data should be updated. And 
it will uh, it provides the rights to individuals such as the rights to access data held about them so if uh, any company is holding your data sorry your information without your permission so you can file a case against that company because that is a kind of a that is coming under dpa if any company is holding your data without your permission so that is a kind of a illegal uh, uh, illegal act so we can file a case against that company because we have the right like we have the right as an individual that we can give uh, provide some permission that who can collect our information and who can keep the information of the individuals so that is dpa then scope again it can be applied to any organization which you process the personal data of the individuals in the uk so you can see dpa is similar to the gdpr act okay but dpa is applied in the uk okay and any company can apply it it is followed by any organization in the uk who is collecting the personal data of the individuals okay that is dpa and at last we have some cyber security rules some laws in different countries so go through these rules these are not that much important but yeah you should be aware about the laws in different countries so whenever we, whenever we are working in the different companies we should be aware about like what kind of laws what kind of regulations the company follow and the country follows so it vary from country to country and company to company okay so go through these 20 laws these are again not that much important but yeah you should be aware about different laws in different countries what is important is dpa dmc these laws okay these are the main standards or at which are mainly asked in the interviews and these are like uh, main we can say a very popular attack sorry very popular standards and very popular act and laws okay so i hope this much is clear and so from the next session we will start the practical part first we will see how we can operate the linux operating system the commands and then we will start with the information gathering we will see how we can use hacking tools we can see how we can operate on in the kali linux and we can see how we can start with the information gathering then scanning and then uh, gaining access and so on so from the next session we will start the practical part so i hope this much is clear and rest we will uh, continue in the next session thank you